Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven. I've gone through and I've done uh, Inotion's uh, level ups. Uh, we're, we're going with, um, so from from the original card, uh, I decided to go with Unbridled Power from the extra set. Uh, just because it's attack to stun. And stun is such a useful ability, it's, it's almost a no-brainer for me. Um, from the level ups, uh, we went with two from level three. Um, because they were just really, really good, uh, and break the chains from level two. Uh, so this is uh, I, this is a, a ranged pull, uh, but it targets two people. It's it's pretty awesome. It's it's like hook and chain, but better. And then the move on the bottom is move three by default, but it can be move five, can be move seven. It's it's got the potential to be really, really quite good. Spiked armor, move two, and attack on the bottom. It's amazing. Um, also increase the value of each retaliate by two this round. Yeah, could be useful if we have retaliate on the bottom. It didn't exactly play into my decision making. Oh, we do have one with retaliate on the bottom. So yeah, we could do move to retaliate and then turn it into retaliate three. It's more about the attacking two, attacking everyone. We want to get this upgraded like ASAP, but it's going to be really expensive because it's a level 3 card. Uh, also, Fatal Fury. This is basically Skirmishing Maneuver on the bottom or kill an adjacent normal enemy whose current hit point value is less than half the difference between your maximum and current hit points. So we start at 10 health. If we're on 1 health, the difference is 9. If their health is less than 4.5, we can kill them with Fatal Fury. It's very specific. It's very specific, but it's interesting. Um, it's also more interesting for the for the stuff on the bottom. Anyway, that's enough waffling. I want to buy some equipment for him. Um, and I was actually thinking, if we go to the shop, the Necklace of Teeth, we're likely to be doing quite a lot of killing with Inotion. And I'd quite like to be able to heal as we go. So I'm going to get that right from the start. That leaves us with 40 left over, which is pretty good. Chainmail, we're immune to negative item effects, so that's a really good choice. That's going to give us a reusable shield. And on top of that, we've still got 25 left. We could go for weapons, uh, maybe get cursing out because cursing is, is really good. Uh, we've got 25 left, so it could be like a 15 and a 10. A minus stamina potion is 5. Major stamina potion is 20. Major stamina potion is, is always a good choice. And then we can come back later for gearing up the rest of the things. Or we could just give him right now and get him that we can't afford the tower shield so actually that idea goes out the window so if we were going to go for the tower shield what would we have with it maybe the black knife in terms of like direct attack cards Resolute Stand is a big hit. Defiance of Death is potentially attack 5. That's That's got a lot of potential there. But we don't really hit super, 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 super hard consistently. Like, we, we don't have something that we can say, yeah, this is the big hit that we're doing, because most of it relies on being injured. So getting... A weapon like the battle axe that allows us to um, increase the area we're attacking, or like the uh, the long spear, they're not as useful for this character. Okay, for the moment, for the moment, and this is this is just the moment. I think what we'll do is get the major stamina potion, so it's done. And then we can save up and uh, and deal with other things. Now, obviously, the chainmail adds to the deck, gets completely ignored because of this. We are affected by scenario effects. 
Um, but I'm really curious to see how uh, how Anotian plays out. Question is, where are we going to take him? I'd quite like to go somewhere with cultists, so we can tick off this Lawbringer quest, or at least get closer to it. So let's have a look and see if there's any bandits or cultists that we could potentially target. It's not looking particularly positive, is it? Nope. So none of the open ones have that. Okay, so if we're not going to take Gator, we could take Firefox. And then we're looking for living bones, corpses, or living spirits. Mm, that's a no. That's a no. That's a no. Okay, so no no living bones or living spirits. Okay, well, we could take Cater out. Or we could take Harold back out. I mean, Harold is, is very good at ranged. And we can always do with the extra money. Okay, so if we're... Uh, yeah, I want to take Blaze out because uh, we're not really targeting the elite monsters. Uh, so I do want to mix that up a bit. And... On that, I'd like to get another high move card. And move three is okay, but it's it's not super amazing. I think we'll lose Daybreak. Move two and Bless, we're just not really doing that often enough, and instead to change it for Tactical Order. Because that move four will take advantage of our Horned Helm. All right, so then the question is, where do we want to go? The Corrupted Cove, it's the giant ooze. It could be a little bit difficult with an unequipped character. We could try the Crystalline Cave. So what have we got? We've got Earth Demons. Yeah, they're relatively straightforward to kill. Flame Demons, we could do with some Pierce, but with Wounds from Harold and Enotian, that should be okay. And Frost Demon, we've got ranged attacks and stun. I reckon we'd be able to, to give this a decent, decent go. So let's do our city encounter and then we'll go to the Crystalline Cave. You decide to unwind at the Sleeping Lion as you're starting to relax and bear of man crashes into the table. Uh, we'll do our best to stop the fighting and gain some reputation, which is lovely. Off to the Crystalline Cave we go. Up ahead, you see the path you're on leads to a dark and unfamiliar wood. It gives you an eerie feeling. As you step closer, you can feel your skin crawl and it forces you to pause. You can't help but think that this wood might best be avoided. Uh, let's push on. The wood is overgrown and rampant with all manner of insects, but with difficulty you follow the path. Somewhere deep inside, you come across a stone pedestal with some strange runes scratched in the base. Sadly, you can't decipher them, but you're in luck. Someone's left a small offering on the pedestal itself. It doesn't give you the choice whether you want to... I mean, I would take it, but uh, it's the kind of thing where it's like, eh, not everyone would necessarily want to do that. When the Quattro said it would be deep in the mountains... You didn't expect it to be this deep. Waggles eyebrows. Your journey through the Copernex has been long and unpleasant following the pulses of this crystal that was attuned to lead you to the source of its disturbances. You just hope that all of this trouble will be worth it in the end. You are climbing a particularly steep, snow-covered mountain when the crystal begins vibrating wildly and then the earth around you begins to tremble as well. You look for more stable ground, but it's too late. The ground gives way beneath you, and you slide down into a dark crevasse. Oh dear. Luckily, the snow cushions your landing, and you discover that the darkness you fell into is not dark at all. Before you sits a massive crystal, the same color and structure as the one you hold. A light shines forth from the larger crystal, illuminating the surrounding area. As you move closer to examine it, a group of demons appear behind you. Hi, guys. Uh, one thing I didn't 
cover very quickly um, is what we did for a notion. So we did consistency. Uh, you saw that. We did uh, negative item effects. You saw that. I've done the two wounds, one stun and one disarm. Uh, disarm is just such an amazing thing. It's just incredible. Stun is great. Really, really useful. Um, and as you guys know, I love wounds. So that's, yeah, that's where we've gone with that. I just realized we're actually on reputation 20. It does not get better than this. Amazing. Uh, right, Enosian. Um, let's, let's go for Dynamo. You might overkill something. Uh, you're not going to manage Workhorse. You're not going to manage Professional. So a number of times equal to or greater than your level plus two. Level six. So it needs to be eight times you use items. The hooked chain, the winged shoes, the power core. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a rest. Six, seven, eight. It's doable, but you'd have to tr really try for it. Some bits will come like naturally, but I, I think workhorse is equally likely. And um, let's go with executioner. Kill an undamaged monster with a single attack. There might be something that you can splat. There's always the possibility. My call has been answered in the nick of time. An otherworldly voice fills the cavern. Please, they have come to destroy me. I beg for your assistance. Okay. Obviously, we have a bunch of different priorities over here. The flame demons need to die quite quickly. Uh, they have a retaliate range of two. So we can start off getting wounds on them straight away with Nightmarish Affliction at range of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. So that is what Harold is doing starting right there. If we put you there and you here, we could lead in with Righteous Strength to get the Bless on everyone. And then Purifying Aura to get a Strengthen on everyone. I'm not sure if that's particularly useful. We ha Ooh. Right, there are traps that are direct damage traps. Where is our... Break the chains. Range of three. One, two, three. So we could pull one of these, or you, straight onto this. We break the chains. So let's say Resolute Stand and break the chains. We'll grab you, pull you onto this. That'll do a decent amount of damage. And then we'll move in and we'll do some retaliation for other things to hit us. That's a reasonable plan. I would like to go slightly slower than that though. So actually, maybe from the brink. One, two, three, one, two, three. Mm, not, not liking it, liking it. Actually, you're, you're range four away, so we're going to have to move in anyway. I mean, we could maybe... Let's do a, a from the brink. So we're going to move 
three, which would be like one to here. And it's mostly just so that we've we've got that all sorted. So one to here, we'll hit you and we'll hit you and bring you both closer. I'm not gonna have to retaliate, which is a shame, but So in the end, they're all right next to each other. That's a range of three. One, two, three. We could get a muddle out. That seems like a reasonable plan. Actually, the strength is not a, not a terrible plan. It's not going to be an amazing attack, but it will potentially do quite quite a good bit of damage. So sure, let's do that. Flame Demon moving and attacking at range. Frost Demon moving and attacking and piercing and everything. Earth Demon moving and attacking in a group. This is going to be all kinds of horrible. Bless! Strengthen. We'll save the stamina potion for now. Okay, we're going one space in. I will grab you and I will grab you because I can actually hurt both of them that's okay in terms of damage ah oh, that's just rude uh, well skip the pull jeez Oh, we're protecting the crystal. Uh, hmm. Can I can I let the target take the damage? Ah, uh, yeah, I get to pick who's gonna do this. Uh, well, that's that's four damage. We'll ignore it for now. That is a lot of damage. Hitting you and you. Hey, why did it not? I'm going to redo that just in case I misclicked. There's always a chance I misclicked. I just need to try and make sure that everyone's uh, cards are the same. My core, please. Okay, so you were doing those. Uh, it was going to be Fetid Flurry and Nightmarish Affliction over here. At least I'm pretty certain it was. It was those, uh, and we decided to go from the brink and break the chains, uh, except you were there, and you were there. Okay, bless. Strengthen. Gonna step into here. Break the chains on both of these. And we pulled you in as much as I would love to not do that. Uh, and we skip the pull on you. Flame Demon comes in, does his thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's because we we clicked the Hawk Helm, it reset things. Okay, that's that's all right. Uh, I'm gonna get this guy out. And I think we'll move over here. And I'm totally gonna going to get these back. A little bit of damage, it's not too bad. Look at that, time zero. Ooh, that's painful, painful on my, uh, on my guy. Okay, uh, we'll go for resolute stand so we get that retaliate and we're still on really good health. We could kill you outright with Fatal Fury, which would be hilarious. Actually, our maximum health is 12. Oh, sorry, our maximum health is 16. So we've lost four at the moment. So we can kill something up to health of two. Which is not spectacular. There is no direct retaliation on... Yeah, let's stun him. Let's stun him. Okay, over here, what are we going to do? We're going to get some healing out on this guy with our Dazzling Charge. And Tactical Order will allow us to get a big hit off as well. That's nice. Paralyzing Bite would be good to stun you. What's the retaliation range? Two. So we are within retaliation range at the moment. But we can move one away. And sort that out. Or. Or. No, we want to. We want to paralyze him. We want to paralyze him. So. One, two, and then it's one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. We'll use stinging cloud to get in here. That gives us a bit of shield, just in case. We are clustered up quite horribly, but... It'll be fine. It'll be fine, he says. Right. So, you're going to heal three and immobilize self. We don't need to stun you because you're not injured. You're going to... Stun you, take the retaliation damage. Consume the fire to maybe kill him. Look at that. And because we killed it, we heal up. Uh, this is going to attack all adjacent enemies for three. If we step in, we'll do retaliation damage against him and get him a little bit close to being killed. Which is kind of interesting to me. This feels like such a, a different way of playing. Uh, I'm going to get Unbridled Power back. And... Uh... Ah, oh, and Resolute Stand's actually in use, so we can't get that back yet. That's fine. Uh, and... Break the Chains. Money, money, money. Oh, actually, yeah. Right, so. Uh, protect the crystal. Kill all enemies in all rooms. The left room will reveal at the start of the fourth round. The right room at the start of the sixth round. And the top room at the start of the ninth round. If on any monster's turn, it can move within the range to attack the crystal. It will focus on the crystal. Twice during the scenario when the crystal suffers damage, any mercenary may burn a card from the hand. Oh, okay. Only twice. Uh, or can we do that, like, later on? Because we haven't chosen to burn it, so I'm assuming we can do that later on. Can we heal the crystal? 
We cannot heal the crystal. Also, I picked the uh, the totally wrong thing, which is entirely on me. So we're going to rely on Harold killing killing the frost demon. It should be fine. We're actually in a pretty good place. We don't need to move. We could move and get money, but we don't need to. Let's, let's get Dazzling Charge back. Good job, Construct. Doing a really solid job. Uh, this guy's just going to attack what's next to him. So, stunning him isn't actually useful to us. So, instead, Stinging Cloud becomes a lot more interesting because we can target more things. And go like this. And we could pull them closer. Well, I think just just that is is fine and interesting. But of course yeah they're gonna heal up straight away. Should have done it over the edge, although I wouldn't have got the pierce, so. Block the damage. Cool. He will die on his next turn. Okay. Fatal Fury is attack, move, attack. I like it. Or we can spite armor to move and attack both of them. And Carterize will will let us get a wound on both of them. I think that's a really good choice. Over here. Empower and Command gets another solid attack out. We are immobilized, so we're we're kind of limited. Uh, what can we do on the top that's going to be useful? We can dazzling charge to get more healing. You're not moving anywhere because you're immobilized as well. Okay, so spiked armor is not as good. It's better if we do Fatal Fury for it. Fetid Flurry gets a decent attack and curse out. Spread the Plague carries on attacking. And we're moving quick with that. So the question is just what are we going to do with our top thing and it might just have to be more healing. So Dazzling Charge for more healing. Well healing and blessing. So it's a, it's a good combination. Good hit construct. Amazing job. Right, we could go for this guy. Just to try and get him gone. Stunned, that's good enough. I should have thought about being able to bring him in, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, you know what? Go for this. Poison on it. It works. Okay, one adjacent ally can perform an attack. Another demon down. 
we'll get a heal and a bless over on a notion. And a notion. Uh, it's just going to go for the one target here. It's a wound, so, I mean, it's better than nothing. Wow. Getting a little unlucky. You decided to really go for it, didn't you? Okay, side door opened. We have an elite over there. We do have Nightmarish Affliction. We'd need to move in closer for it, but I think that's that's worth us doing. We're not going to get close enough with Creeping Curse to be able to do that. Let's let's do Biting Gnats. Uh, right, you guys are fighting this quite happily. He's probably going to come across and help out. So Spiked Armor gives us a move and an attack on the bottom. One, two, three. Yeah, we're going to be miles away, so there's no point in us doing a pull attack. But we could do unbridled power to stun this, just so it's so we don't have to worry about it. So you're stunned and you're effectively handled. So how are we going to deal with these guys? Practical plans moves us one, two, three, four, five, which is a really solid move, and that would allow us to do a big hit. with defensive stance or hammer blow. Hammer blow would give us an advantage on it. Okay, let's let's see how this pans out. So we get the attack on everyone nearby. We're going to consume fire, which is going to stop him consuming fire. Not that it makes a difference. That's good. He'll die before he has a chance to act now. Flame Demon is going to get... Uh, we'll actually ignore that, because it's only one damage. Okay, what are you guys going to do? You're going to move to attack four at range two. So you're going to come out to there. And then you can attack basically anything up to this point. That's a bit of a shame. Because you're not in range at the moment. We could, like, come around to this side and get blast through. What are you going to do? You're going to attack three range four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so... It's basically going to be nasty whatever we do. If we go to here, one, two, three, four. We may as well move in. Get the gold. And then get wounds on these guys. It's going to be a bit painful. Well, actually, those guys. Sorry. That's what I meant. Okay, we need to get in and stop one of these causing problems. So in we come. Heal up a little. So this is attack six and we can make it attack seven and advantage. And a bit of extra shield for good measure. 
big hit. Okay, over here. Um, Boris Bolt gets moving a little bit and Holy Strike will allow us to stun one. Whichever one we go for, probably this one. Harold, I think, removing the poison from this will take three of its health straight away. So that is the smart move. Virulent Strain. We'll do Epidemic and Virulent Strain so we move quickly. And this has only got two turns left in it then, effectively. I'm wondering whether we should start moving down here. This is round five. This will open on the sixth turn. So if we go one, two, three with bounce back. And then like defiance of death. I mean, we could even just heal ourselves up with Furious Aid. Let's, let's plan to heal up. This is going to be weird, but it's going to be fine. So we're going to step in and we're going to stun over here. We're going to get attacked. But it's okay. In fact, let's step into here and get stunned. I'd rather take the three damage on one person as a specific plan. Now it's going to die before it acts. It will take damage this turn and then uh, next turn as well. So we can actually bring Harold down to help out with the next room. This is a decent range heal, actually. All, all things considered, this is really quite good. Oh, he's going to go all that way around. Ha, ah, that's funny. This room isn't isn't much better, but it's not bad. They're going to have to come in in order to do anything. So we could uh we could aim to move slowly and just kind of like pootle around this area. Uh we could do some healing with rock maggots. And in fact, if we go Creeping Curse Rot Mackets, we might even be able to get an attack on them. Flame Demons are doing Flame Demon things. So we can go straight over the traps. It's just not going to be particularly helpful if we do. So let's get to hit. What are you guys going to do? You're going to move four. So you're going to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, you're going to make it like all the way in. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three, four. That's an obstacle. So we could get this.
within range of a three. I think that's that's reasonable. We'll actually back up over this way. Okay, he's almost close enough that we can hit him. Almost. And actually, if we come over this way, we might be able to, like, pull him this way. I do kind of wish they were a little bit closer to each other though. It doesn't have to be much, just like a little bit. Okay, well, we'll go like this. Oh, actually, wrong move. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. Ah, wrong, wrong move, wrong move. Okay. I'll just take it on the chin. Okay, short rest. We'll lose that. Uh, we're going to go for cauterize, which is range three. One, two, three. Oh. Alternatively, we could uh, go for break the chains and cause nine damage directly by pulling things over here. But I think we want to get these wounded sooner rather than later. So we'll go Resolute Stand and Quarterize. That will allow us to move to there and go one, two, three. Yeah, hit both of them. It's going to be a short rest over here. I think we need to be a little bit closer. We could do a big charge attack again, which is always very satisfying. Okay, tactical order allows us to move big. Practical plans allows us to hit big. And we'll do a short rest on Harold. I'm sure, we'll lose Epidemic. You're already moving around there. So it'd be nice to get Nightmarish Affliction out and probably spread the plague. Okay, Frost Demons are doing a bit of healing, so we don't really want to hit them before before anything happens. That's not really going to be a problem. What are you guys going to do? You're going to attack three range four. This is going to be a bit painful. But... You're going to take a little bit of retaliation damage on this, but it is worth it for the, the fact that they will die over time. Steel Construct decided it wasn't going to do anything. Maybe because it would have killed itself on this. I don't know. Um, right, well, seeing as you've already done your thing, uh, let's actually move a little bit closer. And I will pull you through. Ah! Oh, if I pull you... I'm going to take three retaliation damage. It's 
still worth it. Worth it for doing so much damage to him. Uh, and as for the, the flamey dude... I'll skip the pull on him. So in we come. A little bit of healing. We are going to take a lot of damage from the fire guys. Please kill him in one go. There we go. Take the damage, I'm not happy about it. So Harold needs to heal up. Oh my poor construct. Okay, uh these hopefully will do their own thing. these that we need to focus on. Uh, we need to get some healing out. So Furious Aid will get us that healing. But it won't allow us to... Oh, actually, we could step in and we could Fatal Fury one of these just to get it done. So, hypothetically, we'd be doing, I guess, Spike Armor for just a regular move and Fatal Fury to kill one of these and, and just get it done. We need Dazzling Charge for the healing. Empowering Command. Yeah, okay, so you're going to move up here. Empowering Command will let you attack. Dazzling Charge will get us healing on one of us. And we're going to go Fetid Flurry for an attack and Rock Maggots to heal. So this is just a regular attack coming in. We don't actually need to use Fatal Fury here, but we can, so let's do it. We get the healing because of it. Double damage, Harold! Love it. Love it so much. Uh, you can do an attack over this way. This this feels like it's um it's turned around. I was I was getting a little worried. Uh, you know what? Put the healing on on Harold. So he's going to attack everyone nearby. He's going to die next turn. Uh, we will burn a card. We're going to burn Stinging Cloud. Okay. It's not too bad. Is what I'm taking away from this. Obviously, we need to keep this guy stunned. So, Paralyzing Bite will do quite good wonders. Creeping Curse will allow us to curse and wound him. We need high move, high damage. So, Hammer Blow allows us to move four. 
defensive stance will allow us to do a big hit attack. Uh, I think we kind of want to focus on this guy mostly, but hitting that also feels like a really good plan. Uh, we could do another Fatal Advance on it. Sorry, another Fatal Fury. Two, three, four. If we could move four next to it, and then a Fatal Fury. Doesn't look like we've got anything with move four. Move three, but not move four. So we could wait for it to come a little bit closer and do... Yeah, it's a little bit too far away, isn't it? There is a chest in there that we want to get. Okay, right. Furious Aid will get some healing on us. Break the chains will get some damage on this guy and move him around. That's what we'll do. The Earth Demon is just going to heal up at speed 40 so we can ignore them. Flame Demon is going to attack at range, which sucks, but... It is what it is. Uh, so actually, we'll just move like... In fact, no. We're going to jump over to the other side of this guy. Curse and wound him. And then we're going to stun him so that he doesn't heal that. some healing on our blocker. These guys are going to move too, so we don't necessarily really want to hit them that strong. That's a good hit. Pull him over here. Yeah, I saw that coming. So this is going to be attack 4, attack 5, attack 6. We should kill this in one go. But then we're going to be absolutely mullered by these guys. I think it's a I think it's the smart move though. I think it's the smart play. And we're getting a shield. That's going to be very handy. Okay, give it to me. Okay, not the worst thing. Okay, we can kill one of these outright with that uh, Fatal Fury. So we will do a short rest and go one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Mm, yeah, he's just a bit too far away. We need to move four. Okay, well, we can do Defiance of Death to do damage to him. And from the brink to move around to the other side. Oh, no, we can stun him. So from the brink and unbridled power, stun him, move away. Fighting that some virulent strain, get yourself in the way. And what are we going to do over here? We're going to. We're going to back away, is really what we're going to do. Stunning is a nice idea, but we will suffer for it. So we'll write your strength to move three away and shield, and then burn Glorious Bolt to heal up ourselves. Frost Demons are shielding up. He 
he's actually come close enough that we could have killed him this turn. That's funny. Well, we'll stun you, as I said. And we're going to move to here and push this guy back. Mm, push him back? No. No, we're not going to push anyone back. going to hit you and we're going to hit this one. It's not much, but every little helps, as they say. Okay, short rest. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll use spiked armor. Although I do actually like spiked armor. No, let's redraw that from the brink. Sure. So we're gonna go for spiked armor. No, we're going to go for Resolute Stand and Fatal Fury. So we're going to kill you with Fatal Fury. Actually, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to kill you with Fatal Fury and then we're going to do something about this guy. I don't know. Resolute Stand, stand in the way. Shoot him at range, probably. Uh, short rest over here on Harold. Beeping curse. It's unfortunate, but... Oh! Nightmarish Affliction probably would have been a better one to go. Right, Fetid Flurry and... Creeping Curse. So we're going to try and kill him quickly and then move up and get a curse on this guy. Protect Blessing, Holy Strike, do what you can. So we've taken 11 damage. Oh, we can't quite. Can't quite kill it in one go. No, we can only do it at the absolute maximum. Well, I guess we'll... We'll get you killed anyway. Gives us a tiny bit of healing. And instead we'll move through to here. And get a tiny bit of retaliate on. Oh, yeah, I misjudged that. That's not good. Good solid damage there. Uh, yeah, let's get him wounded. It's only two damage, so we'll let it take the two damage. Mm. So this is a really, really big hit. We will suffer retaliate damage from it, but I think it is worth it just to get this down and then hit it. Okay, just the big guy left. That was lucky. Being immobilized, not so lucky. But it means we can charge through with Harold. Harold, I can die. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or just start moving in. One, two. Yeah, let's uh, let's say spread the plague and paralyzing bite, and we'll start moving towards this. Everyone else, uh, do what you can to heal up, I guess. Colorize is a good choice. One, two, three, four. He's too far away though. So furious aid.
Yeah, Furious Aid for the healing. That's all we'll do. Break the chains, because we don't really want to pull him around. Uh, we'll do a long rest, actually, on the Sun Keeper. I think we can, we can afford it. Earth Demon is going to do some moving. He's going to move to... Or at least he would if he wasn't stunned. Actually, let's let's keep the the damage level high. Let's let's do the healing up over here on Harold. And this, there's no no point in us doing that. A little bit of healing up from our Sun Keeper. We will lose Protective Blessing. Okay, so you need to move three to be able to attack. But that's not going to happen. Uh, so instead, let's go Colorize and Unbridled Power. We'll just get some damage on this guy. We want you to be doing a big tactical order move and yeah let's let's go for hammer blow biting that some vile pestilence we'll try and go one two three four and hit him with something. He's moving slow. But he is going to immobilize everyone. So one, two. One, two, three, four. Get a wound on him. Oh, look at that hit. What a wallop. Okay, we're going to step through and get Carterize on him. I mean, he's already wounded, so it's not huge, but that's pretty amazing. And hit him with some poison. I wonder if I should um, actually get Notion to grab the uh, the chest. Maybe. So he's going to die in three turns. One, two. It's possible we could make it. Break the chains is move three. We could make it across in two turns. Right, let's do a short rest. Except we're immobilized, so bad idea. All right, let's let's just kill him. Uh, so if we're just going to kill him, uh, we'll do defiance of death for the big hit, and just in case that misses, fatal fury to follow up everything. You'll just step in and grab whatever's left and. You're immobilized, so there's not really much else to do. So, bless everyone. And adjacent ally does a big hit. Uh, there's nothing that you can actually do, which is a... A shame, but it is what it is. Let's grab the chest at least. Steel ring! Ah, I, well, steel ring design. So we've already found the steel ring design in the past. As the last demon falls, 
The earth trembles yet again, and the light from the crystal fades. Terrifying noises echo throughout the chamber, and you brace for more demons to attack. Instead, the voice returns. I thank you for your intervention. My meditation had gone on for much longer than expected, and the demons were hunting for me. So I sent out a shard to call for help. Light begins to return to the cavern, and you see a glowing orchid standing in front of you. Massive crystals protruding from his head, back, and shoulders. Okay. I know now what must happen. Please, keep the shard as a token of my thanks. You should now be able to control its power. Interesting. So, overkilled a monster? Great. Killed an undamaged monster with a single attack? Great. Didn't get 13 experience. That's exactly what I expected would happen. The Sunkeeper used 32 items. What? I don't understand precisely how... Oh, I suppose from all the running around? But yeah, these numbers are a lot higher than, than I expected. So we could have actually done this as the item thing. Maybe it's from also like getting attacked and... Uh, It's a good job I don't have to keep tally on it, because I would do it wrong. In a flash of light, the orchid disappears, and you find yourself lying in the snow at the foot of the mountain you were climbing. You scratch your head, sigh, and then turn back toward Gloomhaven. I want to find out what that shard is all about. Also, did Harold just get a steel ring, or is it just the design that we've already found? Resonant Crystal. Cool. So we got one more elite monster killed. That's really good. During your turn, destroy an adjacent obstacle. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll give that to a notion. Just in case, you know, there's something that's directly blocking us. Uh... Blaze has gained a level. We got a decent amount of uh, money from that as well. So Blaze, level five. Path of Glory, attack five. This is really good. Move five, bless, affect all allies moved through. If that wasn't a burn card, that would just be such a no-brainer. Retaliate to permanently deduct minus one from all your attacks. That's quite interesting. I don't know if it plays in with how I would play, but it's quite interesting. Uh, hmm. I think most likely we'll go for the path of glory. But I'm not going to put it in. Um, as for... What we're going to work with... Let's get the second one of consistency just so it's done. Then we can go intensify and then the Sun Keeper basically can't can't do badly and with the big hits that we've got I think that's that's perfectly fine Harold Harold you are absolutely amazing but do we want to unlock the new character I think we might I think now might be a good time to do it So, if we were going to put the points in somewhere, it would probably be making Creeping Curse even better because it's a level one card. Or 
or making rock maggots have extra range. I would love it if we could actually like put a, a heal uh, adjustment on there. Don't quite have enough to, to boost this. You know what? Let's let's put a wound on paralyzing bite. It's it's not amazing, but having the stun is great. Potentially one damage, not going to do that much, but stun and a wound together. And Harold is retiring. Power like this is something you never even could have dreamed of. You're pretty sure you can do almost anything. But there's no point in being pretty sure. You want to find out for yourself. It's time to leave Gloomhaven with your newfound abilities. And spend your life trying to do everything everywhere. But you'll come back soon. Next time, you bet there'll be even more Ether willing to push your powers further for a little coin. So we're un unlocking a weird squilly with this. Harold has been absolutely vital in some missions. 75% success rate. Ah, cool. Summoner. With proper concentration, an Ether Summoner can pull anything she wishes across the planet boundaries. With infinite planes comes infinite possibilities. Such efforts can be incredibly taxing, however, and a summoner finds it much easier to transport living things over and... Okay. Wide array of creatures to summon. Support abilities for allies. Reasonable ranged abilities. Low damage. Too many active summons can leave too few cards. Expensive to make all the art for in a computer game. That's brilliant. Okay. Well, I mean, this is, this is pretty much the Spellweaver's... Uh, Sister. Yeah, let's get ourselves a... Let's get ourselves a new mercenary. We'll call a crosswalker. So we could either do the Take Back the Trees one, uh, complete three different scenarios in the Dagger Forest, then unlock the Foggy Thicket and follow it to conclusion. Or we can earn 15 perk points from completed battle goals. This is one that's quite quite fun. It encourages us to, to take her out on missions. So I think we'll go for, for that one and I'm guessing we'll unlock a bard at the end of it. Welcome to the team, Crosswalker. Greater immunity, that's a definite. So that's scenario effects, not items. Uh, and we're going to have a whole bunch of other things that we need to decide on. Um... Well, consistency just makes a lot of sense. And I do like bloodletting, so we'll start off with that. Um, but I'm going to have to do the level ups and read through to see what kind of things we have. And I'll do all that off camera as before. And we'll come back at the start of next episode and uh, and decide what we want to buy. Um, so thank you very much for coming along, everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Gloomhaven. See you soon.